Hello guys, welcome to A Train Parrot. We have broken down from this bullish structure. We were looking for a low. Now that we have this low, the question is, are we in the process of building a dead cat bounce or can we really afford at the moment a V recovery? Of course, geopolitical tensions have the last word, but charts are always two steps ahead telling us the truth before it happens. In today's video, we're gonna look into that global liquidity, many things happening under the carpet and as I'm starting to do the housekeeping at the moment of my charts I'm discovering so much I haven't done a video in four days I had a very very strong virus that made me think about a lot of things sometimes it's good to get those times to appreciate things with a different perspective but all I can tell you it was really tough in today's video we're gonna look at what the whales are doing these people are just so resilient to everything that is going on at the moment we're gonna talk about some invalidation patterns. I'll talk about the things that are still holding strong like a rock and how the short term might be looking. We'll cover general assets as well. All these recent events, it's almost a crime to ignore them. And yet once again, the capitulation from the hash ribbons is showing up. Let's make a stop and let's clear all potential fears that people are going to be telling you next week when they start posting about it. We'll talk about some signals, the weekly RSI, the new liquidity that is forming attracting the price fair value gaps this sneaky order of 85 million the second largest buy since january if no one is talking about that in other channel i don't understand what they are talking about guys if you like this type of content make sure that you're subscribed to the channel hit the notification bell so you get notified every time i put out one of these videos and yes before i got sick i was in a good rush of getting over 300 likes and even 400 likes per video unfortunately life sometimes puts a hard stop and you have to just respect what it says otherwise you end up paying the consequences my last video I actually decided to record it while still having fever but then I ended up three stupid days stuck in bed with 39.5 degrees I'm decided I'm not gonna put my health behind my passion but it will be really nice if today guys you can give the video a like share the video and help me catching up because probably YouTube is gonna really punish this video because I haven't put out any video in four days. It's just the ugly truth. If we work on this together, I'll stick around every single day. Let's make some money. Guys, yesterday I published a very quick update on my Telegram, Instagram, and Twitter explaining why we could be about to experience a four hour global breakout. I share all the ideas, including the incentive for the price to go higher. Make sure that you're following me in one of those social networks because I'm mimicking the posts and it's up to you which one is your preference. Notice that this went out at 2.40 p.m. London time and we were confirming a few hours after the breakout heading towards that juicy liquidity that we talked earlier. We're gonna look next what happened with this setup, whether it's risking continuation. Also at 8 a.m. today, Saturday morning, I published an eight minute update. I was assuming that the longer video was gonna take a bit more effort. So for those of you that like to trade early in the morning on a different time zone make sure that you subscribe one of these three networks these short videos are only going there four hour time frame is what we are seeing here and I'm gonna focus first on the RSI just as a reminder because I haven't done a video in four days we broke down from this channel that was quite bullish as I say this morning at this point in time we were on the weekend and we were talking about the need to search for a low. At that point, we mentioned that we had some tiny leftover of liquidity at the top, right at 67K. And my hypothesis here were two. We might take that final little piece of liquidity at 67 and then pull back to produce the low or just produce straight away the low without taking. And in fact, leaving that remaining bit untouched. With the bad news, geopolitical and a bunch of other news, which I'm not gonna go in detail, things started to rush in quite a bit and we had the breakdown. When we were on the weekend, we were talking about this line in here. We say that it's not likely that it was gonna hold. We talk about the equal highs in here that repeat once again on the 25th of September. We also mentioned that's probably likely not gonna hold either. After that, 
that I started having 39 degrees of fever. Things might be a little bit blur. I say I don't think 63 is going to hold either. And the reason I gave now that I remember is that we have a virgin CPR month. So far, we have never touched at that point the CPR pivots, which are these white lines in here. After that, I went offline for three days and the price came and paid respect to the CPR pivots. Here we are at the moment. So far, we are bouncing. We are using them as support and we are starting to form some sort of reversal pattern. In here, what we can see is something that hasn't been completed, but it looks a bit to me like a cup and handle. This could take us straight into 64.8. No news there because that 64.8 has been a massive pain. You can see these two highs, two more highs in here. Of course, this is not confirmed. And for those people that are bearish, slow down. I know that geopolitical issues might escalate anytime and things might continue to go to the downside. I'm also going to give my bear case. As I mentioned yesterday on my post, on Twitter, Telegram and Instagram as well, it's too early yet to say whether here we are in the process of just doing a dead cat bounce, hitting that 63 for continuation towards lower liquidity, which we're going to focus later in the video to figure whether there's enough incentive to go there for market maker or not. Whenever there is a geopolitical event, the first reaction is panic, things sell very quickly, overreaction, and then people start assessing whether it's really worth continuing to the downside. If it's not, sometimes during this sort of events, you get a V recovery. So personally, I'm not yet discarding either. If things escalate, we could see another leg down and way more selling pressure. That's why monitoring these patterns, in my personal perspective, is the best way to really understand what's going on. News can be really manipulative. And at the moment, I will say we are in alert mode. We are looking for swing trades, short and long opportunities, thanks to the additional volatility that we should be expecting from these events. What we cannot do is take for granted at this point in time, 100% a V recovery or 100% a dead cat bounce and sell from any level. That is what beginners do and beginners win just a few times and very quickly they blow up their accounts. So let's focus now on why I'm thinking 62.7, 63K from yesterday. Very quickly, we have support at 62.7 in here. We can see that the price was bouncing so many times. We have a fair value gap that is huge on the four hour. And this brown line that is roughly 62.9, slightly above it, represents the RSI of 58. That is the median of the most common value of the RSI in the past 150 candles. The main reason I continue to think that this is still a healthy move that can change anytime, but so far we are holding this level of support. We had the local breakout on the 2nd of October. We have been religiously bouncing on that level. We have the global breakout, which is this one in here from the very top of the RSI up until there broke out. We have a retest. Things change definitely if we have a four hour candle closing below it. Things are looking good to get to 58 at the very least. That is a conservative target with the confluence of all those elements that I already mentioned. Is the liquidity still there? Yes, that 62, 8 to 63 is still there. Now that we have managed to get to 62.4, new stop losses are accumulating there. There is always the risk that these new shorts can win the argument and push this down to produce a new low or actually to invalidate our target. But the price is sticking around there and it's not invalidated yet. So I'm still looking for that 62.7 to 63 target. Looking at the daily time frame, the most important question is have we destroyed the bullish daily structure? That should be the first question that comes to your head. We already know that from the past six months, this has been a strong downtrend, only putting new lower lows and lower highs. There's no questions about that. But here is the first time that we change this from this low 
we have this higher low and this higher high. That is when we can say we have now a bullish structure. Have we broken above the highest high in here? Not yet, but this at the very least can be still considered an unbroken structure for a reversal. And that is subject to what happens with this new leg in here. If this ends there, we are good to go. This could perfectly hit the high, bounce, new attempt, retest, and new all-time high. For the price to break this structure, it will have to do something like finding a lower high first and then putting a lower low. For example, if we went to 51K and take note of these numbers, 51K, 57. We're gonna look later at the liquidity of those levels. There is incentive there. That's why I'm cherry picking those particular numbers. So a bearish structure will look like this. Although the bullish structure is unaffected, there is still a narrative to potentially turning into bearish. We cannot discard that scenario. We need to be protecting ourselves against that risk. That is what I mean. Of course, after this bearish event, we should be expecting that in some way the open interest got wiped. We lost the top third level, which was the area that was expecting to finally see the breakout. I was hoping to hold at 19 billion, but we came into the second third. Can we recover from there? Sure, we could do another attempt to 21 billion and break to the top. Let me show you some examples. From here on the 20th of March, we went straight into 21 billion. It is technically doable, but also losing that level, coming to the second third, finding resistance at 19 can also send us back into the 15 billion. So you can see from the point of view of open interest, we are in no man's land and we can literally fall to either side with just a little blow of the wind. During this correct there has not been any significant distribution from big wells. In fact, they have withdrawn even further amount of Bitcoin during the collapse. And what this should tell you is that they have conviction about what's coming in the future. Do they have conviction about tomorrow? No, no one does but they are prepared to wait and to continue withdrawing in the upcoming months. If this changes and we saw a spike of distribution, if you're following me either on Twitter, Instagram or Telegram, you'll be the first one to know because I have alerts directly into my email and that means that all of you guys stay informed with what these big whales are doing. I will say that this double bottom pattern is invalidated. The good news is that we still have a bullish structure so we can continue looking for other patterns that could play out breaking out to the upside. Same goes for the head and shoulders inverse that managed to get to 66.5 but it couldn't make it to 69.1 came back to the neck and even below it. When you look at the big picture on the weekly time frame, things don't look bad at all, in my opinion, so far. As of today, we have the three white soldiers candles in here breaking above the bull market support band, and we have the first week of October after geopolitical tensions moving below the bull market support band. And up until today, we are halfway through between the two MAs, fluctuating right there with some liquidity at 63. If we were to take that liquidity, we will be slightly above the top MA. If by Sunday we are still there, that will be awesome. And speaking about the weekend, we closed the price at 62.7 on CME. We had quite a big liquidity on Friday, closing at 62.7. Again, that's a great thing from the point of view of the strategy of CME gaps, because it means that if over the weekend we move down, by Monday, we should be looking for price throughout the week if things go quick to come back and close that gap. We don't want over the weekend to have a very significant pump and get to 66 and 67 because if we do that, we are leaving a gap below. And by the way, we still have this gap at 54 to 54.5 that hasn't been closed. If what we are doing in here ends up playing out as a dead cat bounce and geopolitical tensions continue almost for granted that this move takes us and completes the ABC pattern, taking that liquidity at 54.5. And by the way, I remind you what I say in the first video of October, which is the CPR model says that if you don't manage to touch 
the first resistance of a month, in this case, this is the first resistance of September, that on the next month, you are typically heading towards the first level of support, which is located at 55K. And the only counter argument that I have against this particular reading of the model is that I'm seeing this on Binance Spot. If we see this on different exchanges, you're gonna find that we did touch the CPR. It's more a matter of which symbol you end up using in the chart to decide whether the chances of hitting 55 are higher or lower based on CPR model. We did have the bearish cross on the MACD. We can see that there has been some slowdown in here. There were two big red candles followed by two pink candles. After these bearish crosses in here, you can tell that there are many more red candles before there is some sort of recovery. That is not sufficient information to say that there is a reversal but it's interesting to see that this lasted pretty much for just two days the selling pressure and we are already at the very least looking for a dead cat bounce so it's obvious to me that the selling pressure in here was a lot heavier than what we are experiencing in the past week. I remember as well in one of my last videos, I mentioned about this double bottom formation on the DXY dollar index. I was saying it's kind of looking bullish. We should be expecting to 102.5. Well, we got to 102. 0.487 so just one cent away from the target which is crazy definitely a bullish breakout on the dollar my question is is it gonna continue inside this pattern there's a likelihood that might play out which is not great for risk on assets so far bitcoin is having this small movement up with the dollar having done this massive green candle it is a bit sketchy sometimes bitcoin can move up with the dollar but that is not necessarily the norm it's actually the opposite we are still looking for a top on gold and a breakdown there are no news from that s p on the weekly time frame after we had the final breakdown in here that we were saying whoa this is big for the s p to break there we have a retest and a lower low now we are in the process of forming a lower high once again and the price continues to rally but it's still above the trend line it's a very very critical time for the s p there is a small local breakout in here which is why i was saying that there are so many fake outs i don't think that this curving breakout in here is gonna take the s p too far but please don't quote me on that because indexes at the moment and are all over the place with this price action geopolitical tensions are having the spotlight when it comes to deciding where the price moves at least in the short term the only thing that's bullish in here is to still have a higher high and an all-time high but when it comes to momentum it's completely depleted it definitely needs another push up volatility is increasing as we will expect on an election year together with so many dramatic events across the globe happening at the same time we are in the breakout zone in here for volatility i will expect as we get closer to the end of the year even higher spikes of the VIX and another interesting update if you've been watching my channel we've been covering the hash ribbons this is to do with miners capitulation at this time in halving events we are looking at 2020 we normally expect a capitulation and you might be thinking why a capitulation with the price going up in here there's an upwards move that is because capitulations are not only determined by the price movements but also by the hash rates and in the past few days i've noticed that the hash rate has been coming down multiple times in the actual official indicator of hash ribbons by caprioli investments you can plot the raw hash rate and see it from the distance and if you ignore the ma's you can see that it's been going up and down and up and sideways it has had some big spikes to the downside and those are the ones that are dragging down the MAs and if they do a bearish cross we should be expecting the indicator to flash capitulation once you have capitulation we're gonna be searching for a buy based on seasonality of Bitcoin having a capitulation at this point as I mentioned when I was talking about 2020 that means some drawdown of up to 15 to 20 percent right before the last leg up and that is based on past performance of course 
it doesn't guarantee anything. And the million dollar question, has anything been broken on the weekly time frame that we should be concerned for the bull market? And I hate to say this to the bears, but no, it hasn't. We had a breakout in here and as opposed to this breakout that we have in July that was a fake out, then later we have to move the line like this, then we have a rejection in 19 of August, and then finally we have the breakout on 16 of September. Since then, we are just in the process of finding a higher low. So far, higher. If the price was to go to 51 or sub 50s and we re-enter below this line in there and we cross the green line, which is located at a weekly RSI of 40, that's when we need to start getting very concerned about the end of the bull market. But here we are at a level of 51 right after a sell off. The stochastic RSI after the bullish cross is pointing upwards, doing good progress, getting to 58. If things continue with no serious news, we could turn things into a V recovery. Remember our target of 62.7 to 63K on this, on this swing trade that I share on Telegram, 62.7 is also the short term holder realized price, which we just lost once again. I remember a week ago, I was saying, I do not expect the price to hold 62.7, just because in this particular bull market, it really really hasn't offered a lot of support. Even in the most bullish areas of the price with a strong uptrend, we were constantly losing it and even spending months below it. I also gave you last week an S1 signal. I will say that this play out so far, it has given an 8% of downside far from the 28% that the previous signal gave in late July. What are the long-term holders doing? Nothing. The price comes down and they are doing nothing. You can even argue that they might have accumulated a little bit more. Let's have a very quick look at the liquidity. You can tell that new orders have accumulated at 67. We have made this level more attractive and that started on the 3rd of October. When the price was coming down in here, people got more bearish and they just made more attractive now to go back to 67k. Do we have something significantly similar in the close proximity below the price? If we go less than 5k up, we take that. That's a 7% up. But instead, we will have to go almost 9k to see the first significant liquidity at 52k. If we zoom in and we just leave this area in here, you're going to see that 51 is the very interesting. Just because I zoom in a lot, now we are able to see the 57. 57.2 was a level that I was talking earlier in the video. 52 is way bigger, sure. It's a lot more attractive from the point of view of volume, but it's over 10K below the price. So that level is only reachable with an escalation of global tensions. And yeah, 46 to 48 continues to be the largest one. Fair value gaps are telling us that up until 65.7, there is a big chunk of liquidity to take from all this dump in here which makes it pretty attractive. If we didn't have the bullish momentum enough to move that high, then we have 59 to 58K down below us. And I really wanna make a stop here on fire charts because we have this piece of liquidity in here, 85 million that got removed after, but that was the contention that they placed slightly below 60K to hold the price there. We can say it's manipulation, we can say it was demand, but so far it has done the trick because from 59, we have managed to make it to 62 so far. And why is that so interesting? Because if you scan with your eyes, you're not gonna find anything as substantial in all this area in here of six months. Going backwards, you're gonna find this one on the 23rd of January this year with 100 million. So that is roughly 15 million more than this and it managed to make a massive move from 39K to 73.5K. That liquidity remained there, whereas this one got pulled out. That's a good argument, sure, but it's very interesting to see that there's almost nothing as significant in terms of volume compared to this thing that we have here. What are the wells doing and how does it compare the support versus resistance in terms of liquidity? We have the purple wells, which are the second largest ones. Those are 
typically leading the price and at the moment they're still buying but with the caveat that is curving asymptotically to a limit so that is looking like potentially they might change their minds the brown whales are still selling putting lower lows the rest of them are all selling and right below the price at 60k we have 42.7 million holding the price and at 63.2 we have 49 million so roughly a 20% additional of resistance. I'm gonna make it more visible like there. Hopefully you can see the detail. And the last thing I wanna cover is global liquidity because this drives absolutely everything. The liquidity broke out that happened on the 5th of August in the price, that's a yellow line. Whereas in the lower end of the chart, we have the RSI applied to the global liquidity index. And you can see that one faked out back within the range. It's interesting to see that the price is still above it while the RSI has moved already below it. And this means that the global liquidity has constricted quite significantly in the past week. I don't see necessarily China here pulling out, so it must be other sources of liquidity that are getting more tight, possibly with the recent events. What we want to see for assets to continue rallying is that the global liquidity starts putting a high and starts on an uptrend similar to what we have in here that clearly have the effect of generating the last leg up of the bull market. Maybe the money printing together with a potential second big cut of interest rates might reflect more clearly that the global liquidity index is expanding and hopefully then we can see it more clear in the chart. Not to mention that the Fed has made a substantial move to the downside in terms of the liabilities which is the opposite that we want. If they are selling at the moment, why would you be counter trading what they're doing? At least from this point of view, being long, we are at a risk. There is an expectation that they should be entering into quantitative easing at some point in the near future. It's clear to me that they still haven't. And together with this move of the global liquidity down, I'm starting to scratch my head and think what's going on with all these ideas going around I really do want to see it in the chart displaying as well for confirmation at the very least guys if you open the description down below of this video and you scroll down to have a look at my favorite products in crypto you're definitely gonna find amazing offers for example fire charts you can get 15% discount if you use the code TTP15 I use from Lux Algo their smart money concept indicator. You can get 30% discount if you use the link in the description as well. If you like seeing the liquidity like I do with these charts, have a quick look at Trading Different. It's offering as well 15% discount. There's definitely an alternative for everyone, but the best offer I have at the moment is to open a Bybit account with my referral link in here, get the 30,000 reward and connect it to my website to get a TTP subscription for free. More information on that, again, on my description, join my Discord server. You can find all my social network links here. Those are the genuine ones. Any other one invitation that you get is just trying to scam you.